Do you know what is most important in the Christian life? Most people have their pet doctrines. They teach about divorce and remarriage. They stand up against human trafficking. They strongly oppose homosexuality. They picket abortion clinics or hold pro-life rallies. But are those things the most important things to be talking about? Too often we get the cart before the horse. We try to help people be more godly or more doctrinally correct without addressing their heart. You see, the Christian life is not defined by the mere absence of sin. The Christian life is at its core a life filled by the Holy Spirit and guided by Jesus. It's the result of being born again and being transformed by Jesus and being filled with his love and the Holy Spirit. The Bible says that Jesus is the head of the body, the church. He says that those who are led by the Spirit are the sons of God. And he says that those who are righteous will walk in righteousness, but those who are the devil will walk in sin. You know, all these other things that I mentioned a bit ago are just sideshows to the main issue. For example, if a husband and wife are filled with the Holy Spirit, filled with the love of God and show that love to each other, will they get divorced? No. If they love God, will they obey him and remain faithful to each other, not just physically, but also emotionally? Yes. If a person loves God, will they desire to obey his instructions? Yes. There's this old cliche, it's not about rules, it's about a relationship. And I would object that it's often presented too simplistically, as though God doesn't really care about what you do, he just cares about your heart. But there is some truth to that saying. God's rules and doctrines are not the focal point of the Christian life. Jesus is. And when we know him and love him with all our hearts, we will want to follow his word and his leading in our lives. If someone doesn't love Jesus and doesn't deeply desire to follow him, it's pointless to explain to them that they're incorrect on some doctrinal point because they don't have the inner drive to follow Jesus. And the answer is not to try to scare them into obeying Jesus. Jesus wants us to obey him because we love him, not because we are afraid of him. God tells us that perfect love casts out fear and gives us boldness before him on the day of judgment. So I challenge you to examine your own heart. Where's your focus? Is it on Jesus or is it on some doctrine or command? Are you striving to help people follow Jesus or just to obey your pet doctrine? Are you fighting the right fight? Thank you.